good. So meet me in a wide legged standing shape, feet parallel. Exactly. And you can always turn so you're on the wide side of your mat. And then from there, loop the shoulders back, pull the heart forward and through, reaching up, big breath in. Diving down, full breath out. Now all you're going to do is lengthen the heart forward on the inhale. And then walk both hands over to your outer right foot, ankle or shin on the exhale. Inhale, get long. Exhale, fold. Maybe that subtle twist here. Now, if both knees are springy, you may find you have to rock a little bit left as you melt to the right. Do linger here for a couple more exhales, letting that stretch happen. Noting the stability comes from the foundation in the feet, through the legs into the core, through the connection with each breath. Come back to center, lengthening everything out. Draw the heart forward for that inhale or two. And exhale both hands to your outer left, shin, ankle, or foot. Inhale, do get longer. Exhale, do revolve. Springy right knee, maybe rocking just a little bit to the right. Both legs are moving towards straight without jamming. The left leg maybe a little bit straighter than the right. Last breath, letting that release happen. It might mean softening your face, your jaw, the area we reference is the mind's eye between the upper eyebrows. <sighs> Bring it all to center. Exhale, folding in. Now your head could always go onto props, whether it's two blocks, bolsters. If you're able to reach the earth and you want to, groovy, but don't force it. Feet parallel, think of zippering up through the inner and outer thighs. Maybe rock a little forward, let the crown get a little bit heavier. Traps moving away from those ears, only moving to a tripod headstand. If you're super duper comfortable and know what I'm talking about right now. And then we'll all bring our hands to the hips once the feet are grounded. Inhale, lift about halfway and do pause as you exhale. And then inhale, come all the way up. And a big exhale here. And we're going to turn our hips, our feet out 45, 55 degrees or so. Noting that means the heels turn in. And while it comes from the hips in many ways, we have to talk to the knees, the ankle, the feet. And then let's bring it on down to the forearms. Maybe adding Gyan Mudra, thumbs, first finger seal. Rocking and swaying for a few breaths in this variation of a goddess pose, temple pose. Loosening up where you need to, soften the face, the jaw. Maybe bring in a horse style exhale. And then rooting and rebounding, let's stand up. Take a big exhale here. <sighs> Left wrist can go over right. You're gonna take an inhale at the top and when you exhale, you're gonna sit your booty back, let the chest come forward, hinging at those hips. Inhale, come on up. Maybe adding a big ha or just a sigh. <sighs> inhale, fill to the top. Exhale to the bottom. <sighs> Keep going. Maybe five more. Four. Three. Last two. And one. Now let's stand it up today. Checking in if there's any compression in the lower back. You can always turn the legs out a little less or more. Feeling what's needed to broaden the sacrum. And then consider coming back down and you could just rest forearms on thighs to make life easier. You could also add a strengthener, popping the right heel. You're on the ball of that right foot for a breath or two. Notice if anything else reacts, relax it. Switching sides, if you haven't, you can always switch more than once. Take that breath or two. Now with the hips back, chest a little forward, maybe both heels can lift. 
Taking a breath while you're low and then standing it up. Take that breath as you come higher. Let the heels come down. Let the arms soften. A little sway of the hips. You can do a heel toe dance with me. Step or jump that last bit. Move anything out of your way if it's currently in your way. And you find the top of the mat, Tadasana. Feet anywhere from hip, shoulder to mat width. And we're going to circle out our hips a few times. Taking the body forward as you inhale, back as you exhale. A little bit like Sufi grinds, but in space. Two or three one way, two or three the other. Feeling free to reverse more than once. Maybe those circles get a little bit bigger with time. A couple more breaths. And then after we rock and sway, you're going to cross the arms, trunk rotations, thoracic circles. Spring your knees, allow the body to move with you as much as is helpful. While we're trying to focus on the mid-upper back, we don't want to strain other areas in that process. So the heel might lift a little bit of the opposite foot. Knees might need to get springier. And reversing at least once. Maybe twice. Even three times. And then finishing up those trunk rotations, arms by your side, chin to your chest. Neck rotation, circling it out. After a heat building warm up, it might feel good to go to the full circle, unlike when you do it right at the start of class. If it's ever too much, honor that. The neck is one of those places that lets you know when you're listening. Finishing up, last breath or two. Hmm. And then we'll roll the head up. Maybe take peace fingers to your chin and align. So the head is on top of the shoulders. Shoulders over hips, hips over knees, knees over ankles. And then just sweep the arms gradually out to that loose low T. From there, spin the palms up, shoulders down, keep reaching up. Take another inhale, connecting front to back, exhale. Right arm moves toward that right thigh, left arm goes up and over. Maybe just take a side stretch. And in fact, today, let's move through it for a couple of breaths on each side before we go any further. And that might give you all the information you need to keep going which would include circling the body, letting one arm follow the other, briefly passes. And then you continue on your way. Again, two, maybe three, one direction. Breathing in, breathing out, at least two or three the other. Then you can come to standing fold, feet about mat width. And then these fingers at the lower back. Or take this standing if you want more of a heart opener, just reaching knuckles down, chest up. Maybe looking right, reaching left, springy knees, especially the one you're not looking at. Of course, changing it up at some point or just letting it be enough to be in neutral. Now still in neutral, let's rise if you haven't or if you didn't stay upright. A couple of breaths to shake it out, shimmy it out. Maybe a little hitting of the mid upper back, massaging is a better way to say it. And then from here, you can step or jump feet to Tadasana. Inhale, reach the arms. Exhale, swan dive, hands frame the feet, replanting them if they got a little wobbly. Inhale, chest out. Stepping or jumping, you decide. Plank. Maybe weaving in chitturanga, elbows grazing the ribs. Inhaling toward cobra or up dog. Lingering if you'd like, feeling the effects of some of that heart and hip opening. 
Same idea here, pushing it back, down dog, or something on the forearms and or the knees. Like dolphin, puppy dog, child's pose. Hmm. Now in a moment, jumping like a frog, let's bring the feet to Malasana yoga squat or garland posture. You can always walk your way in, crawl your way in. Maybe put a throne under your heels or something under your bum. Pull the chest forward and through. Hmm. After a couple of rocks and sways, we are going to move through that longevity kriya. Creating mobility, range of motion where we often need it most. Inhale, hips back, chest forward, a little bit like in temple. Exhaling, sit your bum back, chest forward once again. Inhale, stand it up. Exhaling, take it down. Let's do a few just like that. Maybe adding a bigger exhale. Even a sigh or a Two more. Dropping what needs to go. One more. You can stay in Malasana with palms together, maybe spin them up, glide the shoulders back and down. Couple more breaths here, of course, starting to twist, reach and roll that left side open. You can always support your head with your hand. You can also add some wrist rotations, extra movement to the arm. Maybe a bind, I'm not going there, however. And after at least a few breaths at your edge, coming back toward neutral, take a breath. And exhale, do revolve. Mm. Playing with what works, not assuming. Do you need more support? Do you need more movement? Maybe you want to bind, even if I'm not going there, you could. And then consider Bhattasana, crow. Rocking forward, look forward, elbows draw back. Picking up one foot, maybe the other. Breathing in, breathing out. Now, as always, if you need your crash pad, your launching pad, put something in front of you, maybe that block underneath you. Firm books work, right? <laughs> Whatever, get creative. And then playing once or twice more. Those of you feeling real tricky that want more headstanding, anything like that, you could take it to a tripod headstand here. You could also decide, ah, I want to rest for a momentito and do, right? Whether it's child's pose, puppy dog, a yogi's choice. 